Welcome to module one, session one. This is so exciting to start at the beginning because now we're making this real. So congratulations on showing up for yourself, your children, and all of the people you will impact moving forward. Today, our focus is on creating a mindset for the journey to come. We need to understand what's working and what's not working. We need to create a success metric so we know when we are making progress. We need to create the awareness around what our purpose and passion is so we know what it feels like and we know what it's not like. Before we go into some activities, I want to go over that example I gave in the introduction video about that panic attack I experienced. So as I was saying goodbye to my son as he was going up to the school bus and, and they were heading out, uh, I began to feel that dread surmounting within me, thinking it was like a hate and fear cocktail brewing within me, not because I hated insurance, but because I hated myself for not having any other avenues to create an insurance. I felt that fear in my stomach, that knot in my throat, that tightness in my chest, that pressure building on my shoulders, and my heart began to race. My breathing was becoming shallower as the school bus pulled away, and I doubled over and slammed my knees into that cold concrete. It was a beautiful morning, too, with the sun at my back, birds were singing, and I was trying to breathe through whatever the hell was happening to me. I felt like I'd been shattered into a million pieces and then swallowed up by that fear and doubt, and I had no idea what was happening. Now, this is important because all of these feelings assisted me into knowing that something was very wrong in my life. And that was, hey, maybe I should not be having a panic attack right now. Maybe Jose shouldn't be on his hands and knees. <laughs> and you might be thinking, well, duh, Jose, that's obvious. And you're right, it was obvious after the fact. But these helpful indicators were there even before the crescendo that was my panic attack. These feelings were there the entire time, and yet I talked myself out of feeling them. Why, though? I talked myself out of what was really going on within me because I didn't want to believe it. I mean, have you experienced something similar? I hope not to the degree in what happened to me. And if you've experienced something more severe, you have my apologies. I wish you didn't have to go through that. But I'm sure there are moments throughout your day where you felt these same feelings and you lie to yourself. Or you actively, actively try to push these feelings down and get them away from you. I get it. We don't want the kids to see it. We don't want our spouses to see it. And hell, even we don't want to believe it ourselves. When I was in crawl spaces as an electrician, I knew my gift was my creativity but I wasn't pursuing it. That was frustrating. When I was a water meter technician for a total of three days, I know, I know. Um, I knew that I should be practicing speaking with people and not just going in their yards and swapping out parts. So that was difficult. Uh, when I started my training and I started to sell vacation packages and timeshares, I was thinking I should be selling something I really believed in, something that motivated me. That was conflicting. When I was going door to door selling solar panels, I knew I should be doing something that could benefit the environment without my life being threatened just to make a living. That robbed some of my confidence. When I was studying for my life and health insurance license, I had so many doubts about selling people this perfect plan. What if I mess something up? What if they didn't get their, ben their death benefit? Or they couldn't afford their insurance anymore because of inflation. And how would that impact their lives? Now they have to go through underwriting again. Ugh! Right? I mean, who the hell was I to be teaching someone about the insurance industry? The longest position I've ever held in my life was four years in the military. So you can believe there was doubt, fear, and anger in my head. I wanted to serve people and be able to make money while doing it. but. Was this really it? That's more conflict. I then changed to four different insurance companies, worked under the table doing electrical work for people who didn't truly respect me. I was a dishwasher, a fast food attendant, 
I did ride sharing, I did food delivery jobs. And the whole time I had this attitude of poor me. I mean, I'm just trying to find my purpose. So why does it feel like I was grasping at smoke? The point of all this is you can bet those extreme emotions I experienced during my panic attack, I was already experiencing them just on different levels. And this is only talking about the career-related stuff. This is not taking into account the pressures of marriage, the pressures of being a great father, sustaining other relationships, doing hobbies, or just plain old adulting. (laughs) I've looked at so many piles of laundry and asked God if there was something more to life than this. And as it turned out, there is way more to life than laundry. So let's get into an activity here to get you involved in this. This activity, you are going to need to pause the video when I instruct you, do the prompts, then play the video after you completed the prompts. We're going to do this three times. Simple, right? Great. So you're going to repeat a sentence I say but please say this out loud. Wherever you are, you must say it out loud to get out of your head and into your life. Then take a few seconds to see what emotions follow that statement and write down those emotions or feelings. Okay? Great. So, okay. So the first one is, say this out loud. I'm living my dream life right now. Pause the video. Okay, great. After you've written those emotions, let's jump into another one. Again, say out loud. I know exactly what my purpose, passion is. Pause the video. Hey, you're doing great. Just get these emotions down and don't make sense of them yet. One last time. Say out loud. I know exactly what obstacles are in my path and I know how to navigate them. Pause the video. All right, great job. This is an exercise to begin calling attention to what we are feeling. Now, most of you, maybe not all, but I'm sure a lot more negative emotions surface than positive ones, right? And that's because you don't know what your passion is and you don't know what your purpose is. And usually we don't know what obstacles are in our way because we don't know the destination of where we're trying to get. And and that's okay, for now at least. We will reframe these later, but for now, we're tying in an awareness to our emotions. We will be using these feelings and emotions as a compass. So we're going to do this again. Stay with me here. This time, I'm going to start the sentence, and you're going to be the one to finish the sentence. Remember to say this out loud to get out of your mind and into your life. If you're in a public place, well, good luck. This is going to be a funny story to tell later. So. The same thing, I say it, you finish it, pause the video, then write down the emotions or feelings that come up. The first one is, I know something is really funny when I blank. Now pause the video and write down those feelings and emotions after you finish that sentence. Okay, great. Next one, I know I'm at peace with myself when I feel, and pause the video. And finally, I know when I am confident when I do or say blank. Pause the video. All right, great job. I'm curious as to what feelings came up this time. I already know that there's a lot more pleasant feelings after that one because there's more certainty. And notice how the sentences changed slightly. The first three sentences were spoken matter-of-factly, and the last three sentences were dialing in the evidence supporting something else. A small reframe, but look at the difference in emotions. So let's do it back to back. No need to pause the video this time. Simply listen to the words I tell myself. I'm living my best life right now. Versus, I know I'm living my best life when I am working on my coaching business. It felt a little bit different. The second sentence allows me room to pivot and to think, why am I living my best life? Use this throughout your day to find little ways to gather evidence that you are on your right path right now. 
match the emotions you want to experience to the life you want to experience. Begin doing it now in your mind, even before the physical reality has had time to catch up. Changing and shifting these thoughts and beliefs will begin changing your entire outlook and what you already have that is working and then what's not working. Now, this next portion is super fun and it's an exciting tool that I've developed that I call Clue Me In. We're gonna locate some beliefs that could potentially be holding you back. And it's your job to clue me in as to what those beliefs are. Now, remember, you are an expert in your situation. Regardless of whether you believe that or not, you know how you got yourself in a position that you're in, and that's because of your actions and mindset. If that sounds harsh, yeah, it's a reality that I had to deal with as well. So let's have ownership moving forward, okay? Great. So clue me in. They say success leaves clues. Well, so does failure. So think of a problem you have in your life right now. Something specific, please. Think of yourself giving a talk or a lecture on this problem that you're experiencing. You will be telling your audience what that problem is, when you figured out it was a real problem in your life, and what were the actions that led you into that problem. Now, give this some thought, but I want you to begin finding some clues to what beliefs have been lingering in the background. The beliefs acting as an operating system, running our thoughts, feelings, and actions. Let me give you an example so it makes sense. When I was changing from job to job to job to job to job, um, I kept asking myself, why do I keep changing positions? Well, I, I wanna make more money. Yeah, uh, I can have more time. Yeah, I guess that's true. I deserve more fulfilling work. Yes, definitely, but well, there's this new opportunity that I need to jump on. Well, yeah, I guess that can be, but maybe not. I mean, the common thread was that I, I just wasn't happy with where I was at. And, that, and that's simple, right? I just wasn't happy, so I kept changing jobs. Digging a little deeper, why wasn't I happy with where I was at? What was going to make me happy? You see, by working backwards, it's easier to find the questions to ask yourself to extract that belief out. Tony Robbins says, the quality of your life is based on the quality of questions you ask yourself. I think Socrates had a quote, said, an unexamined life is a life not worth living, or something like that. But when we are experiencing a problem, it's easy to slide into reactive mode and deal with the symptom problems, like get a new job, be more frugal, begin making empty promises, begin cutting people from your life or, or whatever it is. But it's hard to appreciate the beauty of the forest when you're stuck in front of a tree. This exercise is meant to walk you away from your problem far enough to see how you even got there. Through powerful coaching and a journey of healing, I found my operating belief system. And primarily it was, I was not worthy that I didn't have any value to provide others, so I kept changing jobs before I was found out. As an electrician, my boss said something to me that fired me up and tore me down at the exact same moment. He gave me 30 outlets to install while he was attending something else. And this wasn't a time task. He simply told me, hey, do these 30 outlets while I'm gonna go up the street, do this service job or whatever it was, and then he was gonna come back and help me out. No pressure, right? Of course, I took it as a personal challenge and I just went after it, installing these outlets as fast and as well as I could to impress the boss. Well, he was definitely impressed. When he came back, I had three or four left and he said, wow, you were really moving. I didn't expect you to do this much. And I replied with, yeah, I wanted to see how fast I can get them all done before you made it back. And the next words he said will resonate with me for the rest of my life. He said, Jose, that's great. You know, one day you're going to make someone a lot of money. Well, damn, was he right? Was I only here on this planet to make someone else a whole lot of money? What about me? What about my family? Those words rocked me to my core. I know he meant that as a compliment because he truly was a man of integrity, but it was like complimenting a lion for staying caged at the zoo. So do the exercise above a few times 
and locate some beliefs that are operating in the background. Think of that specific problem or issue and work backwards from it. Identify this problem, uh, identify when this problem became a problem and then how you handle that problem. How long did it take for this problem to become a real problem in your life? And what actions were taking that created this problem in the first place? These beliefs could even hide as symptom problems like procrastination, time management, self-sabotage, sense of worth, indecision, lack of confidence. You get the idea. But write these down so we could see them in front of us because in the next session, we're going to go back and start picking these apart. After you've taken the time to write out a few of these limiting beliefs and symptom problems, Again, do this exercise, but we're going to identify the beliefs that are working for you. Think about a success you've experienced or something that brought you a lot of pride and joy. Something that you've done or created, maybe something that you've learned. And again, do that in the reverse order. Identify that moment and then work backwards to how you obtained it. So when did you know it was a joy or a success or a proud moment? How long did it take you to get to that moment of joy or pride or love? And what actions were taken that led you to that moment? I'll give another quick example. In all of my job transitions, there was a common thread. Everything I did, I was really good at. In the military, I was obtaining qualifications that were meant for higher ranks than what I was at that time. Um, in a warehouse, I was promoted to a mechanic even though there were other people that applied for that position that actually knew how to be a mechanic, right? I caught on quickly working as an electric, uh, electrician and I began doing service jobs with the master electrician. I started selling a ton of vacation packages and I was offered a management position within the two months I started. COVID happened. Uh, I became the top selling door-to-door -door salesman out of five regions in the East Coast. And I was able to obtain my life and health insurance license in two weeks landed a great opportunity with the top brokerage where I later had a panic attack. The common thread was that whatever industry I was in, I worked really hard to be the best. I became really good at what I was doing because I believed it would suit a larger purpose. What that was at the time, I had no idea, but that was poison for me at the time because I mistook being good at something to that being my purpose or passion. And you could see now that I would have had a whole lot of passions if I simply went after whatever I was good at. The clue of working hard at everything was the real golden nugget I learned about myself because it came from a place of me not being good enough. So I worked my tail off to be good enough. What clued me into the passion of being a life coach was a conversation I had when I was working in the pick modules of an alcohol distribution company. It was, I was speaking to another warehouseman who became my friend and he asked me how I stayed so positive and what I was doing to keep me sharp. I told him that I wanted to change jobs out of the warehouse and use my captain's license that I obtained after I served in the United States Navy. I shared my belief on having a mindset of a captain so that I could then attract a position of a captain. So I framed my entire outlook of things from that of which I wanted to obtain, which was a captain. After our conversation, he later quoted me on Instagram. And this was a burst of joy for me, not because I was quoted on Instagram, but because a conversation took place that impacted him so much to where he relayed that to his audience. This was another clue for me because I enjoyed sparking insight into others and I had something more to offer than throwing dusty boxes of alcohol on a conveyor belt. After I found this moment as a clue for me, I began searching other times in my life where other powerful conversations moved me. More and more evidence began to point to being a life coach. I also fuse the belief that it is worth having, then I'm going to go work my tail off to be good at it. I have other passions and I have things I love doing, but now I have the clarity on what I want to focus my time on. So after you've done this exercise to find the beliefs that you could potentially be holding you back, and after you found some clues as to what brings you joy, I want you to simplify it by putting a line down the paper, have the bad on the left side, and the good on the right side. As we move forward, it will save us time to be a little organized with our thoughts. Remember, our focus in this module is a mindset for moving forward. The mindset that we are developing right now is one of diligence, 
understanding, acknowledgement, and patience. We will dial into this stuff more, but for now, gather the evidence. The evidence will come together later. Just start gathering it. My last question to you to reflect on is, what does success look like for you? We need to establish some sort of success metric because the success happens in our minds first, then the physical reality catches up with our minds. So what does success look like for you? Even before all the, the money rolls in and the influence comes in, is it more time with your kids? Is it a little bit more money coming into the bank account? And how much time and money need to come in before you consider yourself a success? Could it be just impacting person, one person a week? Could it be one of your family or friends complimenting you because you're more pleasant to be around? Again, these are just a few points to think about. So whatever it is to build our dreams, we are on track right now. So we're going to leave it there for now. You have your homework before you begin the next session. And please take the time to go through this stuff. You can definitely power through all this material and, and get the talking points down. But if you don't do the work, well, the work doesn't get done. If you're here, it's because there is fear and there is doubt. But more importantly than that, there is a flicker of hope that you can be something more and have something more. Do the work. This won't be easy. But when you wake up in the morning and can breathe easier, I promise it'll be worth it. Thank you for finishing the first session, and I look forward to seeing you in the next session. Take care.